Hey guys, Simply Betty here. Today, I'm finishing this betta fish rack. This video is part two of my automatic water change rack that I'll be using for all my future betta fish breeding projects. So let's get this plumbing done because it is long overdue. You watched part one, right? Because I did a lot in that one. I set up the rack, I drilled my tanks, I made the manifolds that actually deliver the water to my tanks. I even painted the rack pink because of course I had to paint it pink and make it look kind of cute. This has just been sitting in my fish room undone for a while now and I'm just really excited to get it done. Step one was plywood. I needed some plywood for under the shelves. I was originally going to be just cheap and lazy and use two lengths of two by fours to support just the ends of each tank so I could be, you know, cheap and lazy. But Dean's fish room convinced me to just do it right the first time. I added some whitewash paint to the plywood. That way I could see some of that nice natural grain underneath. It made it a little more pastel and it matched my room a little bit more. After I whitewashed it, I sealed it with some polyurethane. That way little water droplets don't get on the wood and make little marks or ruin my wood. That's nice. My tanks now have a smooth, flat surface I can set them on and it will give me something to fix my plumbing to as well. It was a good idea. There we go, the shelves are complete. Now I paint the PVC. I can't not try to make my plumbing cute. Come on. Okay, it's story time. So I hired a plumber to do a bunch of work for me on the fish rack, most notably to attach the drain line of my fish rack to the main drain line of my house because I don't really have a convenient way to drain water at the level that it's at. Because I don't have the experience or the desire to do home plumbing projects on my own, I probably mess everything up and cause leaks and damage. I hired a plumber. So he did that. He also made a few changes to the rack, like he replaced my drain line. Now my pretty pink um, PVC has been replaced. It, it got canned, it wasn't good enough. So now I have these, which you know, it's great. They don't leak, they're nice and sturdy. They're a little bit bigger than what I had before and they might not be my pretty pink color, but they'll do. So the plumber, you know, his work's all right, his work's good, but he might be the slowest plumber in the entire world. And he might also be the worst plumber in the entire world at keeping appointments and general time management. It was a nightmare trying to get all this work done. I can't even explain it. Like, I'm not a like a controlling person. I'm pretty laid back and easygoing. If this guy needed to take a while to finish a project, I'd be fine with it, you know? But the level that this guy was bad at general time management just makes me wanna pull all my hair out with frustration. Now I know all those stereotypes about plumbers, they come from people like this guy. So because this has been such a nightmare, I'm I'm trying I'm going to finish it on my own because I literally can't even get the help. And I'm so frazzled, I don't even want the help anymore. I don't even want it. I just want to do it by myself. Ugh. But the work is pretty solid though, and I'll show you what he did. The water will flow down my wastewater lines and it actually goes through a little hole in my wall. That hole goes directly to the crawl space and it attaches to the main drain line of my house. The reason I had to do it like that was because remember, I'm in a garage. This is a garage. So just over half of this space is gonna be my new studio. It's half of my garage that I threw up a partition wall and I finished it out to be like a room and that's just like the only way that I could possibly get a nice just automatic drain line. This cool kind of hefty looking plumbing back here uh, brings the water to the crawl space. I'm going down into the crawl space. The reason for that is to show you something cool. These are filters and they're cleaning the water before it even gets to my fish room. I have a sediment filter a carbon block filter and a chlorine slash chloramine filter, even though we don't have chloramines here, just chlorine, on both my hot water line and my cold water line. Oh, that's scary. So that way, whatever comes into my fish room is safe for fish. That's something I really needed on the fish rack was not to have to worry about de adding dechlorinator all the time. I just want automatic water changes without even thinking about it. These aren't just cleaning the water to the fish rack. It's the whole water supply to the fish room. So that is pretty cool. Now we go under my fish room sink. This is where the magic happens. You see that electronic box right there? That 
is a digital water control valve from Haas Manufacturing. It's an IntelliFaucet. There's a hot water line and a cold water line going directly into this mixing valve. So what happens is I turn on the valve, I tell it what temperature water I want, how long I want it to run, and this thing shoots water to my fish rack. The only missing piece of this whole puzzle is the actual plumbing bits that get the water into the fish tanks. That's all that's missing, and that's what I'm gonna do today to finish up the rack. I'll give a little explanation of exactly what I'll be doing. I even made myself a little sketch right here. The water will be exiting right here. I'll add a union in case I need to disassemble this whole structure. It will go over to my tank rack. I'll add an elbow here a T there, and a ball valve. Um, I'll show you why I added the T in a little bit. The next segment will be a small manifold. I'm putting two T's on this section that face the wall. Each T is gonna have a ball valve right after it, and I'll tell you why in a bit. Oh, and a ball valve on each side of it. And then I'll finally connect the plumbing to my large manifolds, the, the ones that actually bring the water into the fish tanks. And each one of those will have its own ball valve, that one that one, and one up there. These horizontal pieces that control the water flow, I'll think I'll be using hose barbs and some hose to attach those to the rest of my stuff. So why do I have all the T's and the ball valves on this and making it unnecessarily complicated? It's for future flexibility. This whole water change system and my valve and just everything, it's not just for this rack that's behind me. I want to be able to expand. I have projects I'd like to do in the future. I would like to put a recirculating betta fish grow out rack on one of these walls behind me. I want, I want the flexibility to be able to do things in the future and use this same system so I don't have to do any more work. There's only one more thing that I wanna say before I just stop talking and start working on this project. This is a PVC ball valve. Water can flow through it, or you can twist it, and water won't flow through it anymore. This is what I was gonna use for my system. I went ahead, I even painted it so nicely. I, I masked off the handles and I made it pink and perfect. And then I decided that I hate these. I hate these. These are stupidly hard to turn. Like you really have to put some effort into turning these things. And I just came to the realization that I really, really hate it. I wanted to find an option that just, it wasn't hard to turn, especially if I'm gonna be messing with this multiple times a day. I can't be doing this, this bugs me. So I'm scrapping these PVC ball valves and I'm replacing them with these. This is also a PVC ball valve, but it has a metal lever and like it's, it's metal on the inside, and look at how nice and wonderfully this turns. Barely any effort at all. I really like these, I really hate the other ones. I'll have a link in the description if you'd be interested in getting these for your own systems, because this is a dream. So why did I hire a plumber when I've been such a complete DIYer in the past? Well, firstly, I'm not qualified to mess around with my home plumbing and water lines. That's a recipe for damage. Mostly, I really just needed to outsource some labor. Moving is a huge stressor, especially with little kids, and I had so much going on all the time, I just needed some help. The help came, which was nice, but it was so hard getting the help, and by that I mean my plumber, to come to me and finish his projects. It ended up being even more stress on me than if I didn't even have help. Is there a term for that? Okay, in my free time today, I was able to do my plumbing and I decided I was gonna fix up the paint job a little bit. I ended up having a bunch of big white marks because I had to wipe paint away before I could do my fittings because I spray painted my PVC. I just, it didn't look super nice and I just wanted to fix it a little bit. That just involved a bunch of plastic bags and painter's tape masking off what I didn't want touched. It was totally worth it. I just got a little more pink. You might ask why, Taylor, do you go from PVC to hose when you're connecting your big horizontal manifolds? I'm just afraid of commitment and I really didn't want like an immovable fixture. I wanted to be able to wiggle this around, you know, maybe a little that way, maybe a little that way up or down a little bit. I just wanted those a little looser. This upper manifold, I'm gonna mount to the wall, so it's just sort of sitting there right now. I think this looks just about perfect, and I cannot wait to test it. However, before I can test 
my system, I have a couple more things I have to finish. I never fully finished the plumbing on the backs of my tanks. I drilled the holes in the backs of my tanks in my last video. I added a bulkhead to each tank to give me like a fixture to be able to attach plumbing that goes through the glass and it's watertight. Now on the outside of this bulkhead, I'm going to glue a little 90 degree slip hose barb and it will just go right there. I'm on the rack. The hose barb gets positioned right over this little T in my drain, just like so, you know, like just right over it, right? To make sure that the water doesn't miss, I'm actually adding a little length of hose onto the hose barb right here that's gonna stick slightly down into this little opening to make sure that it can't get bumped out of it. You'll see. Like so. You might be asking, Taylor, why did you put the bulkhead on the bottom of the tank and not on the top of the tank. Don't you know how water works? Now I'll show you the inside plumbing. Out of the bulkhead on the inside of the tank, I have a little length of that black PVC. All I have to do is stick an elbow onto there, another length into that, another elbow and a strainer, and that's where my water comes out. So why did I do it like this? It's so I can control the water level in the tank. I want to be able to have water changes done on a full tank. I also want to be able to bring the water level down and have water changes done on a tank that just has a couple inches of water, like, like my spawning pairs. I want that amount of flexibility just in case. I might as well build it in at the beginning instead of wishing I did it later. A fine sponge over the strainer will still allow me to do water changes with fry. I told myself, Taylor, you're gonna work through the night until this project is finished. But then I looked at the clock and I have to get my kids up for school in a few hours and I need sleep. You know it's late when I have my Bigfoot jammies on. The plumbing's on, the glue's dry, and I think it's finally time. Time to do a leak test. Time to make sure it actually works. Come on, Taylor, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I have a towel in case I do have a leak and my first test is I'm gonna turn that digital mixing valve on and it's gonna come out of this hose into the sink. It's not going into the rack yet. I'm shaking. Why am I shaking? Don't be weird, Taylor. Start timer. Oh my God! What? It's working! <laughs> It's working! It's working! All right, now I have to test the temperature. I have to make sure that it's mixing it accurately. I'll go get my temperature gun. Where is it? Sing it! Wow. With this valve, oh my God, I'm like shaking. I'm so, so nervous. With this valve, I can also adjust um, the flow that comes out of it. So I turned the flow down to something lower. I don't see any leaks. Ugh. Now I'm gonna test the rack. <laughs> I'm closing the valve to that hose going into the sink. And I am opening the valve that leads to the rack. I'll definitely need to get some lights for this rack. Luckily I had some spare kind of dim shop lights in my garage I threw on just so I could see what I was doing. Some of the tanks are still filling up, but the leak test is looking really good. I only have a couple problem spots. I have three threaded components and all of them seem to be leaking. Most likely it's because I over tightened it. So I probably damaged the threads and that's why water's leaking. And so I'm either gonna have to chop this off and replace this because I don't know the damage I've caused. So that involves labor and buying stuff or I can try to hack it. I can try to do a sneaky little hack to stop the leak. Before I try to fix the leaks, I'm gonna check for other leaks though. Wait a second, I spot one. I see a bulkhead that's dripping. And there's one more bulkhead that's dripping. I turned my water off and now I'm gonna address these leaks. First, I'll do that little hack that I've done before to try to fix the threaded connections. I've used this epoxy putty in plenty of my past videos, and I haven't shown it, but I've also used it to patch leaks. This will be a little experiment. This epoxy putty bonds to plastic. For that reason, I think it's going to work. 
this doesn't work, then I will order my new parts. That's the thing, I live in such a remote area, um, it's you can't find this kind of stuff locally, you have to special order it. And sometimes it takes forever, especially if you're excited and you're just waiting on pins and needles for something to come. As well, I'll try a little hack first. If this works, I'll be so happy. Now to check those bulkheads. I'm back, hours later. Did my leak fixing experiments work? Yes and no. I was able to get all of my bulkheads working. I went, I undid them, I cleaned the area, I made sure it was perfect, and then I tightened it down really nicely, and they worked. My putty experiment worked perfectly on two of the fittings, but on one of them, it didn't work perfectly, and there's still a very slight, slow drip that is unacceptable. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and order my parts that I need to fix this. I'm not gonna use threaded stuff anymore. I always don't do it right and I get leaks and I don't like it. I'm just gonna do some slip fittings that I can glue. My dream of automatic water changes is finally coming true after so many years and I can hardly believe it. I might be really, really close, but I still have work to do on this rack. In my next video on this, I'll be setting up my air system, which is going to power a bunch of sponge filters. Also, I need my lids and some lights. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks to my handful of really, really nice and generous patrons. I love you guys for throwing, you know, the dollar at me every single month, and it really helps buy supplies for projects like this. I appreciate you. I hope this was a fun and educational video. I hope you learned something about plumbing your own racks or your own projects someday. Stay tuned for the next step where I get this all filtered and cycled and lit and lids on and pretty much ready to go. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.